Okay. Welcome, everybody, to reInvent. It's our favorite time of the year. I hope you're all having a great day. My name is Ravi Tulapati. I'm a senior product manager at AWS. And I couldn't be more excited to be on the stage today to introduce to you all a new AWS service, AWS Data Exchange. Along with me, joining today for the session, I have Kanchan Weikert, who is a senior solutions architect at AWS. We also have Karthik Iyengar, who is the CTO of the Life Sciences Practice at Virtusa. Karthik and team have been great. Uh, they've collaborated with us since the early stages of building the service. We couldn't be more excited to have them with us um, presenting this session today. If there's one thing that I'd want all of you guys to walk away with as you leave the session, then it's this. Imagine a world wherein you're able to answer tough questions such as those to predict outcomes and to better patient lives. What was considered to be an insurmountable problem not so long ago, maybe 10, 20 years ago, thankfully, with the advances in data analytics and machine learning, we are able to do that today. But if you really want to do data analytics and machine learning at scale, you first need access to high quality data sets. And that's exactly where AWS Data Exchange comes into play. We have a very interesting session and we have a whole lot of ground to cover, so let's take a quick look at the agenda. First, we're gonna talk about how data analysis is powering decision making, literally in every business and in every industry. We're gonna take an end-to-end -end view. What does it mean for companies that have interesting data to make it available to millions of customers? What does it mean for each of you to be able to go find the data, and not just find the data you want, but actually do something meaningful with it? draw some insights, train machine learning models, and be able to answer those questions that I showed you. And best of all, you don't have to hear from me or Kanchan, you can hear from Karthik, because their team at Virtusa with their VLF platform that's built on the AWS stack, using AWS Data Exchange, they're meaningfully powering data science, and they're gonna talk about their experience with AWS. We have a lot of ground to cover, so let's just jump right in. Okay. In today's internet age, I'm sure it comes as no surprise to all of you that more and more data scientists, analysts, researchers, companies are using more and more data from more and more sources to make better decisions. Literally, in every field and in every industry, data science is transforming the way businesses make decisions. If you think about financial services, companies have used market data, news feeds, analyst ratings information to make wiser investment decisions. In advertising, advertisers use customer sentiment data to target the right ads to the right people at the right time. In healthcare, doctors and healthcare providers are using um, real-world evidence data to develop new drugs to better patient care. And I'd say with the cloud, it's much more easier today to generate interesting data and to store it efficiently. And what that has done, it has unlocked a whole new set of data science use cases. Let's take satellite images as an example. You're talking about large amounts of data, petabytes of data, but the cloud makes it easy to store those images efficiently. You can augment those images with um, interesting data, and you're able to respond to natural disasters more efficiently. I'm sure all of you with automobiles and cars, you see those small sensors in cars, they generate lots of information about our driving habits. And what insurance companies are able to do now they're able to reward um, good drivers, good driving behaviors with lower insurance premiums. That's because they're able to analyze all of this data. So needless to say, data is transforming how businesses innovate. And along with that, customer expectations have been transformed too. Customers have told us that they want the experience of finding and subscribing to um, data on the cloud, lots and lots of which is being generated and stored in the cloud anyways as easy as the online shopping experience is. But we all know data is not exchanged as easily in the market today. First, there is no single place for you to find diverse data across industries. You may know some of the players in the market. For example, you'd know if you want news feeds, you'd go, you can get it from Reuters. If you want market data, you'd get it from exchanges. And if you want um, uh, analyst ratings, you can get it from ratings agencies. But if you want to augment the data with, say, satellite images that tell you 
how many cars are there in a parking lot outside of a mall? Or you want to look at the foot traffic information for a particular store, you're out of luck because there is no single place for you to find the data. And data providers have the same challenges in reverse. It's not easy for data providers to let the universe know that they have interesting data. And on the same token, it's also not easy for them to deliver the data efficiently to millions of customers. Let's just say for a moment, you did find the data you want. You're, you found a new data provider, a new data set that you want to analyze. It still takes you weeks or even months to be able to take the data and ingest it in your data lakes and analytics. Why? Because every single data provider delivers it differently. Customers have told us that in today's age, they're still exchanging physical media, uh, shipping physical media between each other to exchange data. Some have told us they have to deal with FTP credentials. Dozens, if not dozens, hundreds of them. And that comes with its own set of security and reliability challenges. If you think about APIs as a modern way to deliver data, you still have to worry about the different API surfaces. You need to know the different API endpoints. You need to know nuances. You need to figure out credentials for those APIs. The punchline is there's not a single consistent way for you to consume this data. And data providers have the exact same challenges in reverse. They have to build all of this infrastructure, depending on how you consume data, to be able to deliver the data for you. They have to figure out how to store the data, how to deliver the data to you. They have to uh, build the infrastructure for billing and entitling. And if you ask them, all of this task that they do to build the undifferentiated heavy lifting, that's not a competitive differentiator for data providers. It's just the cost of doing business. That's the only way they can deliver the data to you. And Many data providers have told us that they'd much rather work towards building high quality, high fidelity data because your answers are only as good as the data you have and not really worry about making the data available to customers. And they've asked us for more efficient ways. And what is worse is that because of these barriers, there's fewer data products in the market. If you had an existing data provider, um, it actually slows down the rate at which they generate data products because of the challenges we've talked about. And if you are a company wherein generating data is not your core business operations, you wouldn't even bother because that's not your core business operations. And what happens? All of the analysts and the data scientists who want data, they're frustrated because you can't find the data you want. So after listening to all these challenges from numerous customers and the same set of challenges, uh, from hundreds of customers, I'd say. We are very excited to introduce AWS Data Exchange as a new service that makes it easy to find, subscribe to, and use third-party data in the cloud. In just a few minutes, each one of you can find more than 1,500 data products from over 100 qualified data providers on our service. Data products on our service, they comprise a wide variety of industries and there's vast selection. Today, we have decent, uh, a very good selection, I'd say, in financial services, in healthcare, life sciences, location-based data, aggregated consumer data, and more. And the beauty about data exchange is that once you find the data that you want, analyzing the data and drawing insights from it in the AWS cloud is extremely easy, and we'll see that in just a few minutes. You also don't have to worry about how providers are updating data because you get CloudWatch event notifications that allow you to automate your, uh, the data into your, into your analytics and applications. Subscriptions management and billing, what might seem like a very simple issue, but is a profound one, is easy. You get a central consolidated bill. And if you wonder how is this game changing, I'll tell you. When you think about fortune funded companies, they have offices in Europe and uh, in Americas, the European division goes by the data set because they did not know the American division already has access to the data set. Even if they did have access to the data set, they don't know how to share the same data set between each other. And what ends up happening, you're paying for the same data over and over again. And there are all these inefficiencies. And for those of you who are on an EDP program, best news, all of the data subscription costs, they count towards your EDP. With data exchange, if you have interesting data you can run a business as a data provider. You don't need any experience. You don't need to build that infrastructure. You generate the interesting data that you have. 
You can easily create data sets, create data products, and um, distribute it to the customers, millions of AWS customers via AWS Marketplace. All of the undifferentiated heavy lifting of having to store data, to deliver it, to bill for it, and title it, it's gone. And you can reach millions of customers with AWS Marketplace. Speaking of which, AWS Marketplace is a vast digital catalog. There's numerous software products, and there's about 1,500 ISVs or individual software vendors who are participating in AWS Marketplace. And over the years, we have constantly added new products and new delivery mechanisms to AWS Marketplace. In 2017, we added web application firewall products to Marketplace. In 2018, we added two new delivery mechanisms. Um, we added containers, we added machine learning models and algorithms for SageMaker um, in Marketplace. And with this year's launch, we're very excited to share that the data products and data exchange are now available in AWS Marketplace. So what that means is for data providers, Marketplace gives you the reach to go to millions of AWS customers, just like that. I also talked about the native AWS integration. Let's take a quick look at it. We talked about global distribution with Marketplace. That's happening. The service, the data that you upload to the service today, we are present in 11 commercial regions. You can think about the AWS regions we are in and the distribution um, that it unlocks. Easy to use API and console experience. What you come to expect out of any AWS services. And easy to use console with standard wizards, APIs, SDKs, documentation, tutorials, guides, videos, all of it ready to go right on day one. Consolidated AWS billing, we spoke about this and how it is easy uh, for, for subscribers because you just see everything in one place. But the best thing about this is the downstream integration as to how you can actually analyze data and do something meaningful with it. Virtusa is here. Uh, Karthik is going to talk about what they did. As data providers make the data available via AWS Data Exchange, it's very easy for you as subscribers, when you subscribe to that data product, to move the data right away into Amazon S3. And once data is in Amazon S3, you can do a whole bunch of data analytics with it. For example, with services such as Glue and EMR, you can transform the data um, in ways that you want. You'd be able to instantly add, run serverless Athena queries. You can use services such as QuickSight and Redshift to analyze the data right away. You can even build a data lake using AWS Lake Formation. And if you want to train machine learning models, you can do that with Amazon SageMaker, which Kanchan, um, my co-presenter, is going to show you just how uh, easy it is to do um, with the AWS ecosystem. And the problem of staying up to date with data, that problem is not there as well. Because every time data providers make revisions to their data, Data Exchange will fire an Amazon CloudWatch event. They'll come to your account. You can have a Lambda function that's listening to the event, and you can automate processing end to end, wherever you're analyzing the data. And in addition to staying up to date with the revisions that the providers do, we also have a feature called Bring Your Own Subscription. What that allows you to do is, if you have existing data subscriptions with data providers you're working with, and you want to migrate those subscriptions to Data Exchange, you can do that um, if the providers are participating on the service. And you can do that for free. So imagine this. You, let's say you found a new data set and a new data provider. You're able to consume that using Data Exchange APIs, the modern set of APIs. You can consume your existing subscriptions using the same set of APIs with BYOS. Now you have one single API interface. You don't have to worry about knowing 15 or 20 different API surfaces because it's just one single API interface. You have a consistent way to consume your data. And just like all AWS services, security is built from the ground up. First, all of the data in the service, it's encrypted in transit and at rest. We have a bunch of compliance certifications, and we are adding more along the way so that you can meet your internal compliance needs. And you can go to the AWS services in scope, uh, the compliance website. You'll see data exchange, and you can see the compliance certifications we have attestations for. We also support fine-grained IAM permissions at resource levels. 
What that means is you can actually control which specific user in your organization, as an example, can create data sets. And best of all, audit capabilities. All of these actions, they are audited with AWS CloudTrail. So you have audit and governance. There's also a feature called subscription verification. What it, it's an optional feature for data providers. And what it allows providers to do is they can uh, require anybody subscribing to the product, the potential subscribers, to describe their internet use cases. That information gets passed to the provider. They can now um, review that information, you know, look at their know your customer regulations and meet them. With all that said, it gives me immense pleasure to show you this. Like I said, AWS Data Exchange has a vast selection of products from numerous data providers, and we have products across different industries. For example, if you want to talk about stock exchanges, we have data from Toronto Montreal Exchange, aggregated consumer credit from TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax, insurance intelligence from Verisk, news from Reuters, company information from Dun and Bradstreet and ADP, location data from Foursquare and Pitney Post, open data sets, Enigma, Crux, and Rearc. In healthcare, we have data from Change Healthcare, OM1, MediSafe, MGMA, and Virtusa, our good friends. The list of data sets, data providers, on the surface is gonna grow as we're gonna evolve. If you are interested in data, and you don't see the data sets that you wanna consume here, or the data providers, please let us know. We'd be more than happy to work with the data provider, source the data for you, so that you can consume it from our service. That's AWS Data Exchange, and what we're gonna do now is actually switch over to demo. I wanna show you how the service works. Kanchan, would you mind logging in for a minute? We need to switch. So we just looked at the benefits of data exchange and how it solves problems for subscribers and providers. What I wanna show you next is um, how the end-to-end -end experience of using the service. And what I have up here is the home page of Data Exchange in AWS Console. For those of you who are familiar with AWS, it's very easy to get here. Once you log into the AWS Console, you can find our service under the analytics category right um, next to Glue and Lake Formation. You can also search for the service and it'll show up. The home page has a lot of interesting information. If you have any questions, I think most of it would be addressed here. This is a good resource. Uh, I'd recommend that you look at it. We have videos that tell you how the service works and different features, some of which I didn't cover here today. Um, and I wanna take you end to, through the end-to-end -end journey. So we talked about companies having interesting data and how they can package data products. Let's take a look at that. And the first thing that I do as a data provider is to create a data set. And a data set, as the name suggests, is a collection of data um, that can change over time. Let's walk through a practical example. Put yourself in the shoes of a financial services company. And the data product that I wanna package is has end of day equity prices or stock prices for about 3,500 stocks listed in two different exchanges. I've already created one data set here, which is exchange A, and that has about 2,500 equity prices. What I'm going to do now, along with you to show you, is to create a data set um, for exchange B data for another 1,000 equities. And as you can see in the wizard, we have step-by-step -step wizards there's very simple steps. It's four steps, and you're off to races. The first thing to do is to create the data set. I'm gonna use a script in the interest of time. So we'll give the data set a name. We'll give a short description as to what the data set is about. I'm just saying end of day pricing for 1,000 stocks, less than an exchange B. For those of you who are familiar, you can also tag. Tagging is a way you can group your resources, different resources across services in AWS. This is another integration, which is great. So I'm able to tag this. I'll say there's a cost center. My cost center is one, two, three, and I go create, and I have my data set. But of course, this data set does not have any data. We still haven't uploaded any data to the, to the data set. 
In order to do that, I first have to create a revision. A revision is a container um, for uh, data assets that you want to upload to the service. Now, why do we need revisions? So let's think about what, we, about what we're doing here. I said I'm, I want to upload end of the equity prices. What that means is these equity prices are changing over time. The stock price of Amazon on Monday is different than the stock price of Amazon on Tuesday, market close. And I want to communicate that. And revisions allows me to communicate a time series. So I'll go create a revision. The very first revision that I want to create today is December 3rd. I have data from yesterday, so I'll create December 2nd data. I can specify a tag optionally. We'll just do that. And there, I have my revision. So I have a data set, I have a revision. And now, I'm ready to upload data. And as you can see, there's really two ways. Um, we provide both pathways. If you're new to AWS, you want to upload data from on-premises, it's very easy. You, it's just like a file browser. I, I click upload, and it's, it, you can upload data from, uh, from your machine. You can also import data if you're an AWS customer. You have data sitting in an S3 bucket. You can do that. So I'll go to the Amazon S3. And I have a file here for December 2nd. It has all of the end-of-day closing prices for the 1,000 equities that I want. I selected the asset that I want. I'm importing it. And what this does is, if this is production, we are in IAD region. What this does is it kicked off a job. It's now importing all of the data, loading the data into your data set. This will materialize in just a few minutes. And as the job finishes, you'll see it would have created assets within that particular revision. An asset is the files that you're actually uploading to the service. And I can do this there. I have the asset, and I have an ARN corresponding to the asset. I can do this um, over and over again. I can create more revisions to communicate the time series. But there's another step here. It says finalize. Finalize is a marker. You're just communicating that you feel good. You have the end of day closing prices. And so you're ready to ship this data to your customers. So I'm going to go finalize the revision. And with that, my revision is ready, and it's off to races. Today is December 3rd. I'm going to go create another revision for December 3rd, and I'll quickly cycle through this. For December 3rd, it's not market close yet. I don't have all the data, but I have some files, and I, I feel relatively confident the data is not going to change. I'm going to prep my revision. So I'll go ahead, I'll import the data um, from my S3 bucket. I have a file for December 3rd. I imported the asset. So my revision for um, the last two days was ready. But I want to be nice to my customers, and I want to give them data for the last two years. So let's also throw in a historical revision. I'm going to create another revision, and I'll call it historical data. And I'm going to give all of the data from 2017 onwards. I have files for those. Um, I'll skip tags. OK. So my revision is ready. I want to import the files. I'm getting the data from 2017, 2018. I have all of the year to date until December 2nd in these three files. So there. My, um, I kicked off the job. It's going to import the assets. And in just a few minutes, you'll see that your data is sitting in the service. What do I want to do now? I want to be, I feel good about the data set. I have one data set for Exchange A. I have another data set for Exchange B. I want to create a product, and I want to distribute it to millions of AWS customers and make them available. So I want to create a data product. To create a data product, you have to first uh, go through a one-time exercise of becoming a qualified data provider. We want to ensure we have high quality, high fidelity data sets in the service. So you go through a one-time qualification process, and that's a three, three simple steps. The first one, you, you have to register as a seller in AWS Marketplace. It comes with its own wizards. Um, so uh, I'm not going to go through it now, but it's a fairly well-documented process. And if you have all of the information, officially, I think, in 25 to 30 minutes, you can register as a seller. The next thing, you, you have to request to get whitelisted as a data provider on the service. Our team will reach out to you. We'll try and understand your business, and um, we'll whitelist you as an eligible data provider. Once that's done, you can then go create data products. I logged in with um, 
uh, I logged in with an account that is already qualified as a data provider. So let's go create the data product. If I go to data exchange, data sets, this is my exchange B data, just right here, I can create a product from the data set. And now you see, there's wizards again. It's very simple, you just fill out a bunch of information and your product's live. So let's just quickly go through this. For my product, I wanna give it a name. So I'll call it end of the equity price data um, for, from US stock exchanges for 3,500 equities. I wanna specify a logo and um, I don't think I have a logo right now, so we'll skip that. You need to specify an email address um, so that your customers would be able to reach out to you if they have any questions. So we'll give support at example.com. This product is in financial services, so I'm selecting financial services um, uh, as a category. So when subscribers come, they can filter with financial services and look at your product easily. You'll give a short description, this is what um, your subscribers would see. Um, we recommend that you give good descriptions so that uh, it piques your subscribers' interest. It's just like how you find products on Amazon.com. You look at a description um, and, and you're off to races. I'll also give a long description. If somebody's interested and they want to read more, uh, we have the long description. We also support markdown formatting, something that I'm not using right now. And just like that, I filled out all of the information. If I want to go, um, I can move the step forward. I'll specify the data sets I want to. You'll see it's pre-selected exchange B, that's where I started from, but I also wanna give exchange A data set. Um, so I'm gonna add both of those. So that's what I'm packaging as part of this particular product. And then I can go specify commercial terms. What do you wanna sell this particular product for? So I'm gonna give a 12 month tenor, I'll give $10,000, I'm also specifying a 24 month offer or two years, and because it's two years, I'll throw in a small discount for 18,000. Optionally, I can have AWS collect sales taxes. Uh, I'm gonna opt no for now. You can upload your own templated agreements, but if you're a new data provider, you're not in the business, you don't have to worry about this. We work with various legal teams and customers, and we are giving you a default DSA template. So you don't have to go to lawyers to figure out what the templates are, we just created them for you. Of course, you don't have to use them as is. You can download the template, change the wording like you want, and then uh, use that as a DSA. For, for refund policies, um, I'm not feeling all that great, so we are not gonna offer refunds. That's your choice if you wanna do that as a provider. Subscription verification. This was a feature that I talked about. It's very simple, it's just a toggle. You say yes or no. I, I'm gonna opt no for now. And then when I click next, it's telling me that I did not complete all of the steps because I didn't upload a product logo, right? I need to go give a logo. Um, and once I do that, you'd be able to see what the profile page looks like, the PDP page looks like. If I hit publish, the product, this button will ungrade once I upload a logo. I don't have a logo because it's an example. Um, you'll see that the product will be live in AWS Marketplace in the AWS Data Exchange Catalog. That's it. I'm doing this demo, six, seven minutes, I have my data ready, I'm off to races. And this is what you can do. That's just how easy it is for you to create a data sets and data products and make it available to millions of customers. I'm gonna switch heads. I'm gonna try and show you now what the experience is as a subscriber of data. The product catalog that I talked about. As you can see, we have over 1,500 products. You can use the categories here to filter data and find what you want. So if I select financial services data, I see all these products. You can filter based on vendors. Um, if I search for Virtusa or VLife, I see the data sets. Conscience is gonna use Vertical Knowledge, another good data provider that we partnered with. So I search for vertical knowledge, I find their data products. It's, it's the experience that you're used to browsing and finding products on amazon.com. You can filter even based on stuff that is free. There's a lot of free data for you to test the service and, and, and get off to uh, analyzing data. The catalog that you're seeing here 
is the exact same catalog, you'll also find in AWS Marketplace. So if you go to AWS Marketplace, which is a public website, and you drill down using data products, or you drill down using the data exchange delivery method, you'll see the exact same catalog. I'm gonna pull one of these up. I see the product detail page. This is what I was showing you. Um, there's a logo, uh, the short description as to what the product is, the product overview, the different data sets they packaged, pricing information, and if I hit continue to subscribe, I believe this, this one's enabled with subscription verification. What that's gonna ask you here, yes. So the provider has asked you to describe what your intended use case is. You fill out that information, the request goes to the provider. Once they approve, you have access to the data set. I'm gonna search for one that does not have, um, that does not have subscription verification. Let's try this. I don't think this one has, no. The provider has not requested subscription in, in, uh, verification. So if I go ahead, continue to subscribe, it's just like buying products on Amazon.com. You'll have access to the data set. I've done all of these, so I hit, uh, if I wanna go look at my subscriptions, there's a central dashboard. It's gonna show you all the subscriptions that I have. One example uh, that uh, I can drill down to is IMDB. So I have a subscription from IMDB. It's movies information, actors, and how well movies did. That's what is packaged in this data set, which is exciting. So uh, I have two data sets here. I'm going to go to IMDB content, and you can see there's a bunch of revisions. There's a revision for every day as IMDB is updating data. And if I want to move this, analyze this data, and export it to S3, it's just as easy. All I got to do is go into the revision, select the asset, I'll hit export Amazon S3, data exchange demo, and that's gonna kick off a job. Just the same way providers uploaded data to the service, it'll kick off a job, and then manage the data as in your S3 bucket. So that is the end-to-end -end experience with data exchange, the service. But more interestingly now, uh, I'm gonna hand it off to Kanchan, who's actually gonna get nerdy and show you how you can use this third-party data to actually train a machine learning model. Kanchan, you wanna take it away? Can we switch to slides, please? Yeah. You need data. Um, so, hey everybody, good afternoon. My name is Kanchan Weicker, and I'm a solutions architect from AWS Marketplace team. And today, I will show you how can you use data from AWS Data Exchange and algorithm from AWS Marketplace to train a machine learning model. And for today's demo purpose, I will be using a data set product from Vertical Knowledge listed in AWS Data Exchange. So many retailers are mainly interested in answering one question using data. Simply based on the name of the product, is the product, become, is product going to become popular or not? And that is the problem that we are going to solve or at least you're going to try uh, using a Jupyter Notebook. So typically, uh, data scientists as well as uh, data analysts, they use something called as Jupyter Notebook in order to write some code to perform preliminary analysis, cleansing of the data, feature engineering, and finally, to convert the data into a format that is actually expected uh, by a machine learning algorithm. With data from AWS Data Exchange, you can use your favorite algorithm from your favorite framework on AWS. However, you also have an option to use uh, a built-in algorithm from Amazon SageMaker. You also have that third option, and that is to actually use a third-party algorithm listed by uh, some of the RSVs in AWS Marketplace. And I'm going to do that. I have an algorithm uh, from Intel listed in AWS Marketplace, and the algorithm is called Decision Forest Classification Algorithm. And that is the algorithm that I'm going to use in order to train a machine learning model. So here is how the overall uh, workflow is going to look like. First, we will subscribe to the data from AWS Data Exchange, and then we will load the data from AWS Data Exchange into an S3 bucket. Next, we will open 
a SageMaker notebook instance. And there, we'll write some code in order to perform data cleansing, feature engineering, and we will convert our data into the format that is expected by the decision forest classification algorithm. And finally, we will specify hyperparameters. Hyperparameters are the configuration parameters that are specific to an algorithm. So we will specify those uh, for the algorithm and then we will trigger a training job. Once the training job executes, it is going to create a machine learning model. And that is the machine learning model which we are going to deploy using Amazon SageMaker. And finally, we will perform a test simply based on the name of the product. Is the product going to become popular or not? So let's get started. So let me dive deep into the console and show you some of these steps. So as you can see, I am in the AWS Data Exchange console now, and I have opened the retail data sets trial product listed by vertical knowledge in AWS Data Exchange. And by looking at overview, you can see that the product contains several data sets from large retailers, and these data sets mainly contain information about consumer reception. That is, how did customers perceive these products? And this is what we are mainly interested in. So for our test, I'm going to use the data from Bath and Body Works. And using this data, I'm going to train a machine learning model. So now that I have subscribed to this particular data set, let me click on View Subscription. After clicking on View Subscription, I can see this is the data set that I'm actually interested in using. So I'm going to click on that. And I want you to note the data set ID and the revision ID. So instead of loading the data from AWS Data Exchange via console, I'm going to load this data into an S3 bucket using code, using Boto3 APIs. So let's get nerdy now, right? Like let's dive deep into how do these data scientists and analysts take the data set and how do they train a machine learning model. So what I've done is I've opened a notebook instance from Amazon SageMaker. And this is the notebook instance in which I've written some sample code in order to do data cleansing feature engineering as well as training of a machine learning model. So this is how this particular sample notebook look, looks like. And over here, I've written some code. I've declared a few variables, imported a few libraries uh, in order to get started. Next, we are interested in loading the data from AWS Data Exchange into an S3 bucket, right? So we are going to do that using, uh, using APIs here. So I copied this revision ID and the data set ID into two variables over here. And then I wrote a sample code, right, which uses Boto3 API in order to create an export job. And with the help of export job, I am loading all the assets that are part of this revision from AWS Data Exchange into my S3 bucket. And you can see that the job completed and the data was loaded into an S3 bucket. After the data was loaded into an S3 bucket, I copied it to my local notebook instance within my Amazon SageMaker environment. And then I decided to you know, do preliminary analysis of my data. So you can see here, there are two types of files here. One is a products type of file, and second one is a variance type of file. So we are going to keep it very simple here. We are not going to use information about pricing, promotion, as well as container size. We are simply going to try to predict whether, based on the product's name within a specific category, are we able to predict its popularity or not. So I loaded this data into a pandas data frame. And let me show you how my data frame looks like after performing the cleansing. So you can see here, so you can see here, my data frame has got 
a column called name, a column called category. So let me scroll down here. Let me show you this one. Yeah. So you can see that my my data frame has got a column or a feature called name. I also have two other features called category and subcategory. And you'll notice that subcategory is the feature which I created by extracting high occurring suffixes from within the name. And I also created this additional new feature called length, which actually tells you how many words are present in the name of the product. And after creating these features, I also have this feature label, which is the most important feature here, because this feature tells you whether the product itself became popular or not. So after converting this data into, uh, you know, into this particular format, now we are ready. But wait, now that our data is ready, what is the format that the algorithm is going to accept? So I went to AWS Marketplace, I did a quick lookup and uh, on decision forest classification algorithm, and after going to the decision forest classification algorithm, I came to know that the algorithm accepts the data in CSV format, and that too in numeric format. So that's what I decided to do. I converted the data from the CSV format into the numeric format. And this is how my data frame now looks. It contains all the numbers. And for the nerds out there, I used a technique called one-hot encoding for category and subcategories column. And I used a technique called embeddings, which maps words into the vector dimension in order to convert the textual uh, information into the numeric information. So after I had you know, converted the data into the numeric format, now I was ready to train a machine learning model. So I loaded this data into a CSV file, and then I uploaded that CSV file into an S3 bucket. So our data is ready. We have already subscribed to our algorithm, and we have, uh, and all we need to do is just trigger the uh, training job. So if you remember from the architecture diagram, the training job accepts three parameters, data, algorithm, and hyperparameters. So I specified these two hyperparameters, which are, uh, which correspond to the algorithm. So since decision forest classification is a tree type of algorithm, uh, it accepts these two parameters. So I specified appropriate values for these two parameters, and then I triggered a training job. So simply by writing these few lines of code, I was able to trigger a training job with Amazon SageMaker. And once the training job was completed, simply by writing a line of code, I was able to deploy that training job in form of a SageMaker endpoint. So after the uh, SageMaker endpoint was ready, I was good to go. Now I can actually perform some testing and uh, see how the model performed. What I also did is I kept a certain part of the original data set aside, and I am going to use that in order to evaluate how well uh, is my model. So based on that unseen evaluation data set, I evaluated my model, and I came to know that it was accurately able to predict up to 71% accuracy. And that's not too bad for our demo. So let's see how the model is, uh, you know, how the model is working. So here is uh, one product that I invented, just the name, not the actual product. And I specified a category as hand soaps. And then my model told me it's not going to become popular. Then I tweaked it a bit. You know, I just removed the birch word from my product name. And still, the model told me that it's probably not going to become popular. And I also noticed a bit earlier that uh, the hand soaps category is not so popular. And this really, uh, this, this really uh, uh, explains the same. However, after changing hand soaps to three wick candle, I could see that it is going to become popular. So my model is saying that vanilla hand soap probably is not going to become popular, but vanilla three wick candle in the gifts category is going to become popular. It's quite interesting. And then 
uh, I tried two other examples, frozen uh, lake travel mist and frozen, frozen lake lotion. And the model told me that the frozen lake lotion is going to become popular. So you saw how I was able to take the data from AWS Data Exchange in order to train a machine learning model. And if you would like to you know, try out uh, the experiment that I performed, I would recommend you to open an Amazon SageMaker notebook instance, open the AWS Marketplace tab, and this is the third notebook. This is the notebook that I would like you to you know, click, on, click use on, and then uh, play with it. Like see how the experience is uh, by yourself. And this really covers uh, my entire demo. So Ravi, off to you now. That was amazing. Thank you, Kanchan. Um, We're gonna hear from Karthik and how their team at Virtues and VLife are actually using data exchange, um, uh, using the AWS stack to make meaningful progress in decision sciences. Karthik, off to you. Sure, thank you very much. So, uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for, uh, you know, uh, Kanchan and Ravi. I think we got a very end-to-end -end scenario about how we're using the AWS Data Exchange as well as the AWS Marketplace. So, my name is Karthik Iyengar. I work with Virtusa Corporation, and we are a system integrator, global system integrator, cover health, uh, healthcare, life sciences, and other industry verticals. I work as the CTO for the life sciences division, and I want to make sure that you know we kind of take this story forward and tell you how we are reaching out to our customers by becoming a data services provider on the AWS Mark, on the data exchange using a platform known as VLife. So VLife as a platform in a nutshell, as you can see it up on the screen, it focuses on four areas or therapeutic areas. So renal, orthopedic, type two diabetes, and oncology, as you can see over there. On the right hand side of the screen, you would see that these are the service lines on which we are working on with our customers, that's clinical trials, patients engagement, bioinformatics as a service and commercial analytics, covering a breadth of companies across uh, medical device manufacturing companies, biopharmaceutical companies, and healthcare companies. We also are focusing a lot on open source projects with Stanford University, Indiana Biosciences Research Institute, as well as University of Texas School of Public Health. And we are throwing open some of the open source packages that you could actually import and use, which is very important that we kind of like build on it. Now this entire stack, as Ravi mentioned, is built on the AWS stack, and these are the two engines which are very strategic to us. AWS Data Exchange to provide data, and we as providers are uh, providing synthetic data. And our case is primarily on synthetic data because that's what we are providers of. And the corresponding machine learning models across 35 different ailments, five of which have been published, I will just briefly walk you through the same. Now, having given you a background about the VLife innovation platform, which we give to our customers, this is how we are using as what you saw my colleagues Ravi and Kanchan talk about. First of all, we are, the biggest problem with machine learning model is on really having high fidelity, high quality data, as Ravi mentioned. So what we've done is we've converted this entire US population in terms of 35 different ailments and have given out 364 million lives with 815 billion records, and we're hosting a sample of it on the AWS Data Exchange and we are looking at various classifiers. Key classifiers being, for example, lung cancer. So in terms of finding out how do you really look at the tumor cells being detected early for prevention and cure. The second one being around heart ailment, which is around uh, uh, looking at the rhythm of the heart or in terms of the blocked or the choked blood vessels, and very specifically in terms of looking at the biomarkers such as smoking, obesity, blood pressure, so on and so forth. And then one of the use cases that we work with the Indiana Biosciences Research Institute, and uh, this is for the state of Indiana, where we took the real population, looked at it from a, uh, from a perspective of CDC and NIH, brought together this data, and used the synthetic data versus the real world data, and built out this classifier. All are for you to available and try out, try out the notebooks from the AWS marketplace, and there are a couple of other classifiers as well. So the biggest thing is how can you offer real-world data with the same uh, no, uh, synthetic data with the same amount of noise as much as real data, but yet being more high fidelity when it comes to the missing values being treated in terms of the real-world data. The architecture of the VLife platform, as what you saw earlier on, is very similar on uh, the AWS stack. Importantly, 
we are looking at making sure that we have the Jupyter Hub coming up on follows, as well as the various components in terms of the AWS Marketplace and the AWS Data Exchange. Now, in the interest of time, I'm just moving ahead. So how do we really build out the synthetic data? We take a sliver of the original data, the real world data, and then we kind of look at the CDC or various uh, features and the parameters such as creating a longitudinal patient timeline for an EMR record. We look at the symptoms, looking at uh, conditions, comorbidities, medications, and quality of life, so on and so forth, and then fitting this out and taking the details in terms of age, gender, population, socioeconomic factors, everything ethnicity, and then creating this, using this open source tools or proprietary tools and creating the synthetic data. Most importantly, we are working with universities such as Stanford to apply the concept of data sharply, if you know what it is, it's actually commercializing the worth of every single individual record of your data set to make sure that you do not hit the outliers yet you only consider those records which are going to help you train your data set, uh, train a machine learning model better. The second thing to consider is the multi-accuracy. Example, in a nutshell, multi-accuracy is if you're looking at an EMR data set and you've got multiple ethnic groups, how do you make sure that your machine learning model is going to be fairly and justly treating every ethnic group and the machine learning model is absolutely treated right? So that's around data sharply and multi-accuracy. Finally, creating out the data, rendering it out through the data exchange for 35 different ailments right now that cover uh, opioid abuse, oncology, type 2 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, heart ailments, meningitis, so on and so forth. Now, specifically, how are we shaping our customers' digital journey using the AWS data exchange and the AWS marketplace using real life as a platform? Smith & Nephew is a first example they're the largest, uh, one of the large uh, medical device manufacturing company who are into orthopedic reconstruction kits and uh, advanced wound care management solutions. So what we're really building out for them and helping them plan the journey is how do they really create high fidelity machine learning model that focus more on accuracy, precision, recall, and AUC to really build out those models that can give prediction in terms of uh, remote patient care monitoring once post-acute care surgery has happened, whether a patient is recovering or not. The second one is Cardinal Health, which services 100,000 hospitals on a daily basis. We are working out on a proprietary, high-quality high synthetic data generator with them. It's called proxyhub.com, P-R-O-X-I-H-U-B.com, and we are looking at the entire U.S. population, 35-plus different ailments. We're also working with the University of Texas along with Cardinal Health, to look at subarachnoid hemorrhage, or SAH, which pretty much means that there's a, a blood vessel which can actually burst inside your head, inside the brain, and cause brain damage, severe brain damage, or even death. So identifying patients with subarachnoid hemorrhage and predicting whether a patient is going to get a sudden headache or not is a prediction that we are working with the postdocs and with the researchers, the PhDs at the University of Texas School of Public Health from a population health standpoint. Another example I'd like to quote is Food Buy, part of Com Compass USA, the largest food services uh, manufacturer in the world, I mean, provider in the world. And last but not the least, I would like to quote in the interest of time just one more example, that's Module, a data analytics company that offers belts that's got replete with accelerometers, pressure sensors, gyroscopes, and throws out periods time and again. We have built out 32 predictive models and since it's a data-heavy company, what they're really trying to do is turn themselves into a, a data company, and the prediction models run on random forest, or for example, even on a different kind of classifiers like logistic regression. To train these models, we use synthetic data, much more high fidelity and high quality. There's enough and more literature that we published around the same. So please take a look at the AWS Data Exchange and at the AWS Marketplace as what my, Ravi show, you know, my colleague Ravi showed. And the Jupyter Notebook or the kernels are available on the AWS Marketplace that Kanchan talked about. So thank you so much, Ravi. Back to you and open to questions. That was amazing. Thanks, Karthik. So let's just bring it back together. We've been talking for quite a bit, 55 minutes or so. There's a lot of information cognitive overload. So we started our journey with this question. Imagine a world wherein you're able to answer these questions. Um, wouldn't that be wonderful? And what you've seen is 
this is not a moonshot. This is something that Virtuous and VLife are actually doing today with all their different data science use cases and the different practices in life sciences. And I'd want to impress upon you that answering these questions is industry agnostic. What you really need to be able to answer those tough questions are two things. You need high quality data sets and you need high fidelity machine learning models. Kanchan has showed you how to train a machine learning model and she sort of somewhat simplified a bit because you'd have to cleanse the data and so on and so forth depending on the data sets you use. But with Karthik's uh, VLife platform, they actually are supplying pre-trained, high fidelity machine learning models via AWS Marketplace. So the punchline is, it depends on where you are. If you have a data set um, and you're interested in it, you can find it on Data Exchange. You wanna train the model, you can do that with SageMaker. You wanna find pre-trained models, you can find it in AWS Marketplace that companies such as Virtus have created. And what you're able to do is you're able to now answer those questions. So what do I want you to walk away with? The future, which we thought 20 years ago, was not possible, is possible today. And I couldn't be more excited to see what's in store over the next 10 years. Okay, if nothing else, firstly, I wanna thank all of you. Uh, I hope you're all excited for the week. This is reInvent. We have a whole lot of exciting sessions. I know you all came from long distances. Many of you would have walked all the way from Venetian. If you did that, congratulations, you got your healthy steps in. Uh, I know it's after lunch, so thank you for being here. I couldn't be more grateful to be here. Thank you, Karthik. You guys have been a great partner. Uh, I hope this session was informative, and if we'd love to chat, and I hope to see you next time. Cheers.